Before we get started with Ohm's Law, let's go over some basic electrical keywords and terms that are very helpful to know to help you understand Ohm's Law better. A series circuit is a circuit that just has one path. A parallel circuit has more than one path. And a series parallel circuit is just a combination of the two. In automotive circuits, most circuits are parallel, but some of the circuits that they use for perhaps daytime running lights might be series circuits, and we'll learn more about why they would want to use parallel versus series in automotive circuits in a later lesson. Voltage is electrical pressure. It's measured in volts, and it's represented by the symbol E when we're doing our calculations. And just note that some books use the symbol V, but in this course, we're going to use the symbol E. Other names for voltage would be electromotive force, EMF, which is just an abbreviation for that, and difference in potential. When you're using a voltmeter, you're actually measuring the difference in potential between two points where you put the leads, and that becomes your voltage measurement. Current is the actual flow of electricity or flow of electrons, and current is measured in amps, and it's represented by the symbol I. And note again that some books use the symbol A. Oftentimes, if they're using V for voltage, they'll use A for current. But like I said, in this course, we're going to use E for voltage, I for current, and R for resistance. And the calculations will be the same. It's just that there were two ways of doing it, and some people like keeping it one way, and other people like the other symbols. I found that E, I, and R work best for me, and that's the way I'm going to teach it to you and you could easily substitute the other two symbols, the V and the A, and it wouldn't change anything that you've learned in this course. Resistance is the opposition to current flow, and resistance is measured in ohms, and like I said, it's represented by the symbol R. Power is the rate that electrical energy is transferred by an electrical circuit. It's measured in watts, and it's represented by the symbol P. And there's a formula for power, which we'll learn in a later lesson, but basically the formula is P, power, equals I, current, times E, voltage. And like I said, we'll learn that relationship and do some calculations with it in a later lesson. Voltage drop is the amount of voltage used by a component or a part of the circuit. And we use a voltmeter to make a measurement of voltage to find out how much that voltage is. And by understanding Ohm's law, we'll know ahead of time approximately what we expect to measure. And if we were testing a circuit, we would be expecting a certain measurement, and then we'd be using the meter to decide if we got that measurement. And getting the correct measurement would lead us a certain path in diagnosis, and getting the wrong measurement would lead us to a different path of diagnosing. A conductor is a substance that makes it easy for current flow. Examples would be gold, copper, silver, steel, Anything that will allow current to flow more easily is considered a conductor. On the other hand, an insulator is a substance that does not allow electricity to flow easily. And examples of insulators would be rubber, plastic, glass, dry wood. And if you think about what's on your electric cords in the house, they have a rubber or plastic that's there as an insulator so that you don't touch the electrical part of the copper that's inside of there. There's two common types of wire that's used in electrical circuits, and one of them is solid wire, and the other one is stranded. And the solid wire just means there's one piece of copper going through the insulation, and the stranded wire just means that there's a bunch of strands of copper next to each other going through the insulation. And the advantage of solid wire is usually it can carry more current for the same physical size if we used solid versus stranded, but the benefit of stranded wire would be that it's more flexible because it's using those smaller strands of wire. When you go to bend the wire or if the wire needs to move or wiggle back and forth during the operation of the device, stranded wire is less susceptible to breakage because it has flexibility inside the insulation, where a solid wire has much less flexibility. In our last two terms, are alternating current and direct current. Now, alternating current is what's used in your home where it's current that's reversing its direction. It means the electrons are flowing one way and then they're flowing the other way and then back to the first way and then back to the second way. 
the current is just vibrating back and forth. If you looked on an electrical device, it would say in, in North America, it would say 60 hertz, which means 60 times per second. And the difference between that and direct current, direct current, which is what is produced by a battery, you have a surplus of electrons on one pole of the battery or one post of the battery, and they move from one side to the other side, from the negative, where there's the surplus of electrons, to the positive. And once the battery is balanced back out, then the battery is considered dead or in need of recharge. So when they construct batteries, they use some type of a chemical reaction that takes the electrons off of the one plate and moves them to the other plate, the negative plate. And then when you hook a circuit up to it, you're actually just giving a path for those electrons to go back from the negative to the positive. So these are the basic definitions that will just get you started. It's helpful to understand what these are. And some of them we're going to go into great detail in, and others we may just mention here and there as we progress through the course, because this course is mostly going to be about Ohm's Law and exploring the math behind it and how to calculate the different values of voltage, current, and resistance in the different types of circuits. So in the next video, we'll learn about Ohm's Law and the three formulas that we use to make our calculations.